Alrighty, so today's gonna be a bit unhinged. <laughs> Hello, I am Kenny JD, content creator, nosy bitch, as well as indie musician. What's up, man? It's Sean Peck, the Ultimate Dot Connector. And welcome to Connect the Dots. Connect the Dots is an incredibly special set of conversations where we discuss not only what happens on the court, in the booth, or behind the scenes, but also take an unfiltered look at stardom and culture. You can't learn funny in school, you can learn comedy. I know plenty of people went to school to get the background. We get to know who people are, what drives them, inspires them, motivates them, makes them into fully fleshed out people. A real humanistic look at those you know and love. If I wasn't a comedian, I'd be a professional show. Shout out to our partner C4 Smart Energy and Prize Picks. Love you all. Welcome to Connected Dots Flavor. We got Flavor Flavor in the flame building, flame. man. <laughs> Hip hop wow. icon. Connect the dots wait, icon. We, wait, we started already? Let's go. We're rolling. Come on. Hi. Hey, I ain't know that. Word up, man. Wow. Y'all connected, y'all connected this dot already now. That's right. Yeah, let's now, go. Yo, I, what's up, y'all? I'm Sean Pecos. I'm the host of Connect the Dots. Sean? Sean Pecos, man. What's up, Sean? To the break of Sean. I mean <laughs> Dawn. Dawn Sean. <laughs> and, and I'm Kenny JD, fellow co-host. What's up, Kenny? Hello. How you doing, Kenny? I'm great. Better than Even any. better now because Kenny we is have a better than any. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because we have an absolute icon in the room today. I'm building. so excited. That's right. Um, Th thanks to needs, you guys. Needs no introduction, really. But if you're <laughs> for some reason unaware, this is hip hop icon, flavor of love icon. <laughs> uh, it's a real life icon, uh, businessman icon, just iconic in every way. Flavor Flav, everybody. You know who the beauty and the brains of the show is, right? You <laughs> there it. she is. <laughs> there she is. Kenny, better than any. <laughs> Word up. So, so Flav, talk to me. How are you, my brother? Yo, like a coat in the closet, just hanging in there. You know <laughs> Yo, what I'm man, that's all just, we can do, real. man. You know what I'm saying? Just hang in there, man. I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? Can't kill nothing, won't nothing die. I complain about the prices because they're too high. <laughs> And if y'all don't like it, then I'll punch your eye. <laughs> All that great stuff. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. I'm fucking, I'm so hyped. Right? First of all, my brother, uh, as me being a young guy growing up in the Bronx and uh, coming from the street of the Bronx, I want to say thank you. Uh, one, You're I want to say thank you is because it's because of brothers like you, icons like you, that honestly gave and paved the way for a brother like me to change my life in the street and be able to have an executive job at Def Jam later on and be able to work in music. So from the bottom of my heart, my brother, I want to say thank you for yeah. myself and all of us who you represented and, and opened up that pathway. And I want to say thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank that. you. And thank you all for having me, too, man. Right. And yo, man, I'm sorry, man, but I got to say this, man. I can't hold this back. What's up? Absolutely. Check this out. You look like you, but... There's a reminder in your face, bro. Uh -huh. You remind me of Fat Joe, man. <laughs> you look like you could be his family. Something, man. Yo, Word so, up, man. So you look crazy. like you, you remind me of my boy Joe Crack. Well, B, thank God Joe real. Crack is a handsome man. That's my brother. Yo, that's all. my guy. You know, I'm, 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 we grew up together in the same projects, Forest Projects. That's where our families are from. Actually, wow. my godfather is a guy that he loved his whole life called Ronald B. Hagen. He right. was a first round draft pick, I think in like 72, 73 for the Sacramento Kings. Wow. And Joe loved him. And then Forest Projects, uh, uh, the park is called Reha uh, B. Hagen Park. Okay. And that's my godfather, it's my father's best friend. Okay. And my dad loves Joe like a son. Joe's like my brother. We spend holidays together. Wow. I'm an honorary, you know, terror squad, you know what I mean? No and, doubt. And, uh, and, and the guy's on fire. It's so crazy that you brought that up because, you know, Joe wrote a book. And Did I he? don't know if in his book, Kenny, that he talked about. There's a time where Joe had a fight with some Brooklyn kids, and they cut him in the back of his neck. And it was at this place called The World or down on Avenue A, the club. I remember The World. And we went to go see you and Chuck D perform that night, man. Wow. Yo, I'm talking about we went to see Damn. Public Enemy, Chuck D and Flavor Flav, and Joe talks about he has a big scar on his neck. And how we got close, we didn't even know that we were from the same projects, 
But when I ran up on Joe, when I saw what happened, he had, he fought like 30 guys in the club. I'm not going to lie, Flavor. It was a nice place right, to y'all. Right, right, And we come outside, and he had the Dapper Dan Fat Joe shirt around his neck. And I went up to him. I said, yo, bro, I know you're waiting for these guys, but you got to leave. You're going to die. He's like, what do you mean? The guy was bleeding, man, down his black, like a, down his back of his neck like a river. And I'm like, yo, Joe, if you don't get to the hospital, man, you got to get out of here. I know you want to get busy and retaliate. Right. But we had such a great time prior to that. But in this book, we went to go see you guys perform. Rip it down. Wow, that's crazy. crazy. You ain't that's never crazy. seen a show like a live public enemy show. Yeah, that, hey, hey, hey. I'm, I'm, I'm from the Bronx, too. <laughs> yo, you, you and Fat Joe, big pun. Y'all ain't the only ones from the Bronx, you know what I'm yo, saying? So 165, my, my, 165 Grand Concourse, Grand baby. Con Executive, Executive Towers, Executive right? Towers, 14 years, boy. You know my, what I'm my saying? My close friend George Stork said the best thing he used to see, see yeah. you at the bank in the corner Word all the up, time. on the strength, man. My apartment looked right down, smack down, and dab into Yankee Stadium, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. But then also I stayed on... Um, Gerard McCullen, too, for four and oh, a half Gerard. years. Oh, Gerard, okay. Know what I'm saying? But, you know, that was my block between 161 and 167 on Walton. Walton, that's right. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. You know, I, that, that, and then also I was around on 163 and Sheridan. And Sheridan, that's right. That's, you know what I'm saying? So that's my area, you know? So I'm a Bronx lady. I'm a Bronx boy, too. But I live in Vegas now, though. Oh, how's yeah. Vegas, man? Yo, man, I, well, I've been living out there now for about 19 years now, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And... I love Vegas, you know what I'm saying, because it's a lot different from where we come from. Right. You know, me, I'm originally from Freeport and Roosevelt, Long Island. Long Island, that's right. right you know right. what I'm saying? So out in Vegas, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, the atmosphere is different. The weather is different. Right. You know, just that West Coast vibe is so different from this East Coast vibe because we don't really have the mountains and stuff out here like they do out there. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that, but the weather is always a warmer than here. Right, right. And I like it warm. Well, there's no know? humidity, right? It's just like high heat. I know we should go out to Vegas. Yeah, they got... Walk they outside, it be 124 degrees. Yo, and can I tell you something? <laughs> That's what I like. When I'm in Vegas, I love it, man, when it's like 123, 126. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because we don't get that type of weather here, for That's number right. one. Right. And, and, and I'm amazed by it. Uh -huh. And second of all, it's like when you go out there in that real hot weather, man, mm -hmm. or you burn up, soon as you come into the air conditioning, Kenny, whew, you pass right out. <laughs> that that feels so good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you another thing that I like about living in Vegas, too, you know, it's 24-7. You know, the lights don't never go out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. People, they don't never stop coming. You know, all of my celeb friends always coming out there performing somewhere in some casino or either at Dre's or, you know what I'm saying, in the whole nine. And I always go out and I support. You support You know what friends. I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Word yeah. up. And then also, too, the drinks, they don't never stop pouring <laughs> and that's what made me stay out there you know what i'm right, saying right, right. E even though t i don't drink today now because I'm, I'm i'm um three and a half years sober congratulations you know what i'm saying yeah for that you know, you know God three, and you, half, man. three and a half y'all you know what i'm saying it's, it's been a journey it's a you journey know what i'm yeah. saying but 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 i'm but i'm getting through the journey one day know? at a time man so yes yeah, so i love i love vegas i love that that west coast vibe and plus it works for me. Right. Mm. New York, and I love home and everything. There's no place like home, but New York works against me. Right, right. And that's right. because this is where I'm from, all my friends, my close friends, and, you know, this is where the skeleton's in the closet and all of that stuff be <laughs> at, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So You bump into them guys you don't need to bump into this yeah, little thing. Yeah, that, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you, you come across... Cross some friends, you know what I'm saying? Now, now being that I done made it big, some of these old friends are coming to me, man, with their hands out bigger than the catcher's <laughs> mitt. You know what I'm you saying? You got more cousins hey, you yeah. ain't never had before. Yeah, right? yeah word <laughs> up, man. I got way more cousins than I. Hey, one day I was riding in my vet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I turned the air on, and cousins was coming out. <laughs> I'm like, yo, oh, man. I, I was trying to... I, was trying, I put my hands You're over... To <laughs> you got cousins I, coming I put out. my hands over the vent. Yeah, trying to, try to block the vent, man. Like, where's all of these extra You're cousins? You're like, yo, where did I get Puerto Rican? 
freaking the Ecuadorian cousins. Yeah, they were up, coming out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. People trying to implant man. memories. Like, remember that time when I saved your cat and I saved your dog? Yeah, word up, word <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, but I mean, you know, but uh, but ain't no place like New York. You know what I'm that's saying? That's right. That's right. New York is my birthplace, and I ain't gonna lie, but it's the best place. Mm. Love that. Man. Just because it works against me. <laughs> Because this is where I'm from. But it's still the best place to be, the best place to live. You know what I'm saying? I love New York. You know what I'm saying? And now, let me tell you something. And it's crazy, right? I want you to just give us a little bit about how you feel about growing up in Long Island. We, last week, we had a young gentleman on the show named uh, Chow Lee. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how he's from Hempstead, Long Island. But he feels like people treat him different because he feel like Long Island's not cool or whatever. I said, first of all, you better do your homework, bro. Long <laughs> yeah. Island got Flavor Flav. You understand? Biz Markey, Biz Markey, Buster Rhymes came Buster out of Rhymes, there. Yep. Uh, uh, Scott Storch, the producer. I said, yo, listen to me. So, so what can not you tell the young kids? Not only Who that, Eddie, another, another Eddie Murphy play. came out of Roosevelt. He Ooh. was in my ninth grade English class for a little bit. Okay. Oh. Until I got kicked out of Roosevelt and put back <laughs> in the Freeport. I <laughs> But Eddie Murphy was in my ninth grade English class. Howard Stern Howard is from Stern. Roosevelt. Oh, okay. okay. Dr. Julius Irving is Dr. from J, Roosevelt. Dr. J, that's right. That's right. And also, you know the group. Guy, Teddy. Yeah, of yeah. course. Damien and Aaron. And Aaron. Well, Damien and Aaron is from Roosevelt. Oh, cause so so uh, Teddy from Harlem. Yeah. So they, oh, so Aaron is from uh, Roosevelt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Aaron, Aaron and Damien. Oh, wow. Both, that's both dope. the Hall brothers, man, are from Roosevelt, Long Island. That's what I told so, the young boy. I said, listen, it ain't where you at, it's where you're from, but you got to do your homework, right? right. You always got to do your homework. Right. What's but, some advice you but, give but, to some but, of the young but cats? But then not there? only that, but then also it depends on the type of life that you're living. It depends on the places that you put yourself in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because it can always be the best place in the world, but you got to put yourself in the best places. If you put your pl yourself in the wrong places, then it's going to be the worst place in the world. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's common sense. You know what I mean? So baby, my man just haven't put himself in the right place. See that child? You got to put yourself in the right place. That's right. You got to put yourself in the right place, man, so that way it, it can feel right. So you that's can right. go where you think that you want to go. Huh? So that you can go where you think that you want to go. Or That's where right. Your future is. So you can go anywhere that you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Word up. Nah, you want to go everywhere, man. Come Every on. Everywhere. Talk to us about that, man. <laughs> Talk to us how, how, how we got there. You in the song with Chuck D. Well, you know, um, being that Flavor Flav is all over the place. I'm <laughs> everywhere, <Worldwide>. man. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, my partner Chuck said, look, man, we need to do a song about you being everywhere. I said, Chuck, not a bad idea. So we sat down. Chuck started writing. When Chuck started writing, then I started reciting. <laughs> so put it this way. I'm saying that Chuck D wrote this song for me. Oh, wow. You man. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I did a real good delivery on the record. It's a well put together record, you know, because Chuck D, you know, my partner always been ahead of, ahead of time. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, with all of these public enemy songs that we've put out, and he's never been proven wrong. And the reason why Chuck has never been proven wrong, because before he writes the song and put it out, he does research first. Right, mm -hmm. okay. You he know does what I'm saying? That's right. So when you come up with the right information and put it on the records, then can't nobody prove your right information wrong. You can't prove right wrong. You can't prove wrong to be right. Wow. You only can man. prove right to be right, and you can prove wrong to be wrong. So Chuck D has been right on a lot of the records that he's wrote, written for us. So that's why I always back him up, because you're, you're only going to back up what's right. That's right. But even if Chuck was wrong, I don't give a fuck. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still backing my boy up, man. That's Come right. on. Because, Loyalty. hey, Loyalty. we ain't right about everything. That's right. But we don't have to be wrong about everything. And if somebody is always right, something's wrong. <laughs> I, I'm, right, just sitting, I'm just sitting here in amazement for a second because I didn't realize, like, I grew up watching you on TV in particular, and I was always wondering, um, like, I didn't know that the way that you speak is so naturally poetic. I don't know why I thought it was a bit. That's you. <laughs> That's entirely you. Well, that's me, because I'm in the place to be. Does that come? We can eat. <laughs> bird it, to the bird. Do you think that, 
Do you think that it's like since childhood, perhaps, that you've been like naturally poetic? <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, I think I think I started getting naturally poetic when I started writing rhymes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't write my I, I I didn't write my first rhyme until. Oh man, this was maybe. Ooh, I didn't write my rhyme, first rhyme until maybe 1978. Mm. Or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's when, you know, MCing first started really yeah. coming into existence, Kenny. You know what I'm saying? Because DJing had just recently came into existence. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I'm... You know, I was trying to rhyme like everybody. At first, I couldn't even do it. Mm. Mm. I couldn't even do it. Why man. was you felt because I tried, right. but my but 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 I was whack. <laughs> <laughs> never whack, player. Yeah, Come I was on, whack. Man. I was whack. You know never what I'm whack. saying? I'll never forget the first rhyme I wrote. Get up, get up, but get get on down. Rock to the beat of the funky sound. The beat so sweet won't never go sour. Day by day, every minute of the hour. Good morning, heart aches and tell me what's new. You got nothing else to do but drink brew. Trying to trying to feel the flow, feeling so low. Standing there drinking a quarter old gold, no. getting drunk like a skunk. Looking like a fool, you was drinking that shit since junior high school, trying to be so grown. Now you're all alone. Could have had a nice life, but now it's blown. Can't walk across the street without almost getting hit, all because of drinking that motherfucking shit. <laughs> Yo, Flay, that's better than half the rappers I know. Hey, like, hey, listen, you can't that say that was This was, that, that was, this one was one supposed the, to be the bad one. Yeah, that was that was that was my first rhyme that I ever wrote. Fine. I, I ain't gonna Yo. never forget. I Fine. mean, I ain't gonna lie, but ever since then the rhymes did get better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a good platform to start off. Start yeah, off yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about growing up in the Bronx, man. Like, 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 like being on tour. With public enemy, right, and, and that coming about, because initially they say you guys, how did it go with the Beastie Boys? Did they open up for y'all, or how was nah, that situation? Nah, man, we we opened up for the Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys was out there before Public Enemy. Wow, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember um, we we had to open up for them in Passaic, New Jersey, in 1986. Wow, right? And matter of a fact. Let me tell y'all a story, because y'all might ask me about the clock, how it started. I was going to ask, yeah, we're gonna yes. Get <laughs> so I'm going to put that story inside of this story I'm about to tell you guys, mm -hmm. okay? Awesome. So ask him, Kenny. Yeah. Where did the clock come from? I need <laughs> to know. There you go. That too, that too. Where did the clock come from and everything? All right, so listen. So back in the days, we used to wear stopwatches, right? right. We used to wear stopwatches. So one day, there was, we, I, and, and me and my boys, we used to play the dozens. Yep. Right? We mm -hmm. used to play the dozens. We used to be in the hallway snapping on your mom, the, pops, <laughs> the big hole in your roof with the big leak, you know, the big rip in your couch, the roaches crawling up your wall, <laughs> all that, right? So we was in the hallway playing the dozens, and this girl comes through our projects with this big, box of shower clocks that she stole from a place called Fortune Off. I remember Fortune Off. You remember Fortune Off? Yeah, downtown. discount right. spot, right? Yeah. Legend. So back in those days, as we were playing the dozens, right, in the hallway, my boy, Son of Berserk. Remember Son of Berserk? You remember Son of Berserk? That's right. Well, check this out. Okay. Son of Berserk took the stopwatch off my neck, and he put one of those shower clocks around my neck. And everybody's Fell all on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> now back in those days, it, back in those days, if you dared Flavor Flav to do something, he would do it. Right. So what I did was, uh, they dared me to wear that clock on stage during the show. So when we went to open up for the Beastie Boys mm. in Passaic, New Jersey, 1986, I wore that clock. The next morning, we got the newspaper clippings back. We was on the front page of the Daily News, Newsday, New York Post, 
the look of the clock was dope. Fire. So I decided to keep that look, you know what I'm saying? If you look at our early pictures, y'all see Chuck D was wearing a clock too. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Chuck took his off. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, kept, Chuck kept taking his off, and I kept leaving mine and on. You kept leaving your And you know what? I'm so glad that I left it on. One day, my partner, Hank Shockley, mm -hmm. he said, Flav, you need to stop wearing that clock now, man. It's getting old. It's getting worn out. I'm like, fuck that. I'm <laughs> not taking off my clock for nobody. And I'm glad I didn't because it became part of my signature. Yep. It became part of my identity. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This clock has got me into a lot of trouble, but has got me out of a lot of trouble, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the hall nine. So everybody want to know how did the, the clock start? Well, listen, I've been marketing and branding now throughout years and years of working in, in promotion and things of that sort. Probably one of the most iconic Smartest, incredible ideas in the history of branding somebody. Yeah, brother. man. Yo, let me tell you something, man. When I, I after after I started wearing this clock, and we got over to England, mm. and we had to play at Hammersmith Odeon, mm -hmm. right? Now I was the last one to come out on the stage. Mm -hmm. The last one, you know, S one, you know, Terminator X and S ones are out there mm -hmm. already doing their drills. The next thing you know. Chuck comes out, and everybody is like, oh, where's Flav? Where's Flav? I always left the audience in suspense, you know? Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, I'm a hype man. You got to hype up You gotta hype up the audience, you mm. know what I mean? I was always the last to come out. So Chuck comes out. He's on the stage. He's doing Rebel Without a Pause. Then I usually come out on, hey, yo, Chuck, yo, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? On, on, on Rebel Without Rebel a Pause. pause yeah. When I got out there on that stage... In England, and I looked at the audience. Everybody in the audience had on clocks, and I'm like, "Oh, oh hey. shit! I did this, yo!" And that's before was social crazy. media. Yeah. Imagine if Instagram, TikTok, and all that was out, man. Nah, that's what I'm saying. Nah, was there true, wasn't no true, TikTok. There wasn't no Instagram. That's right. There wasn't no. There wasn't no real life social media yeah, back that's right. then. That's None right. of that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm not saying that's so that, iconic. Not man. only that, but that was still in the days of the Betamax. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Still watching Betamax and, 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 and carrying around these big eight track <laughs> tapes. You know and all that. That was in them days. Ah, oh, that's fire. Yeah, please, you know man. what I'm saying. So God is good, man, because he's he, he, he's preserved me. You know what I'm saying to where. I'm able to sit here today with you guys and yeah. talk about this. There's a lot of, you know, my friends from my era who's not living today to talk about it. Right. But I thank God for letting me be one of the ones to be able to sit here and share these stories with y'all. Yeah. God is good. G-I-G. Remember them three letters. G-I-G. God is good. All day, every, every day. day. There's well, a lot man, of people that went to sleep last night. They did not wake up like we did today. That's right. But we are the chosen ones. And the reason why I say we are the chosen ones is because he chose us to wake up today and have another day of life. So the only thing that I could do is be thankful and grateful. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I, 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 I call God the electric company. Mm. He's my Con Edison. Right. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I say that is because, like, you know, when you go to church, right, you pray to him and, and letting him know, you know, not, that you acknowledge all of the gifts that he gives you. When you go to church and you pray, that's paying a bill. To, to me, when you go and you, before you eat your food, you say your grace. You bless the food. To me, that's called paying a bill. You know what I'm saying? That's why I call God the electric company. You know, when he feels that you're taking it for granted and you don't thank him, you're not paying your bills. What happens when you don't pay your bills? You get your lights cut off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And listen, God is the only one that knows when your lights are going to go out. You don't have no clue or no idea. So that's why I call him the electric company. So when I sit down and I before I eat, I bless my food, man. 
And I, and, I, and I thank him. And the reason why, too, is because we're so fortunate. You know what I'm saying? During Thanksgiving, I came here for the parade. Mm -hmm. Right after the parade, I went down to the Bowery. Mm -hmm. To the Bowery Mission, and I fed the homeless down there. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And the whole night. And when you go do stuff like that, that will make you appreciate what you have in life more. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The older that I get, the more that I value life and the more that I appreciate life now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because every day is a learning lesson, and I've learned a lot through all of these years that I've been living. So I'm glad that God made me a mouthpiece to the world. So now, you know, I can you know, talk to the world about a lot of the mistakes that I've made within life, mm -hmm. and hopefully these people will listen to me and don't make the mistakes that I made. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know, mainly when it comes down to, to drugs, right. right? One of the worstest mistakes I really feel that I made was experimenting with drugs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine, and I went through an 18-year dark tunnel mm -hmm. with that shit. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. And God has delivered me out of that tunnel. You know what I'm saying? And while I was in that tunnel, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. So now, being that I came out of that tunnel, I'm clean today. I can tell people, well, listen, don't do this because it's going to make you feel like that. Now, don't, don't touch that. Or you're going to feel like this. Or you're going to feel like that. You know, I'm glad that I did learn about these things. Right. So that way I can actually tell you what it feels like. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, experience is always going to be your best teacher. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. In the whole nine. And some things in this world you don't really need to experience. Maybe if it can't help your life out or if it can't help you further your life. Meaning if you feel like something can help you grow or be better, even to just try to say, oh, I want to yeah. just try to say to see what it feels like. It's right. not a good thing to do. Right. I know I, my mother was a, was a drug addict for a long time, you know? Yeah. Well, the word on the street is I understand what they say. They right. said you spent up to $2,000 a day on drugs. Man, no, more. Wow. More. I was spending like twenty six, twenty seven hundred 2700 a day. Wow. You know, and all. But... That's because I wasn't in my right mind. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. That's because the drugs had a hold of me. me. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. I'm glad that I didn't make it through all of that, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? And, and God let me live through that for a purpose because he knows that I'm a mouthpiece to the world. You know what I'm saying? And he wants me to go around and teach and tell people that that's not the way to go. It's the wrong path to take. You know what I'm saying? And the more people that listen to you and follow you down the right path, then God will give you more people that to, to, to lead. I say you know? that because I used to come home from school and see my mother high as a kite. Yeah. And I'd be like, Ma, you know, what's up? Like, like what can we do? Like, meetings, what is this stuff we could do? And she'd yeah. always be like, I love you. I take care of you. I do what I got to do, right? right. like, once I figure it out myself, pop, then I'll be able to get it right. right. You understand? So I could totally right. relate because she couldn't help nobody else out until right. God got her right to figure herself out. Right. So when you and say this, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm talking. And let me tell you something. You can go to all of the rehabs in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went through maybe six or seven rehabs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the tools. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why the tools didn't work is because I didn't use the tools right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And one of the main things, the tools that they give you is you got to change your people. You got to change the places you go. Mm -hmm. And you got to change the things that you do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what helped me out was moving out moving. to the West Coast. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. and, and and moving away from and moving away from the people that I can easily get stuff from. Um, right, right, right. You feel me? In the whole night. No nine. accessibility. And plus, you know, I mean, I was I was a nut, so I was my best customer, if mm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. 
You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the whole nine. So I'm glad that I did move out to the West Coast and it helped distance me from that. Then once I got away from that, then I came back here, man, and I started going to some schools, detention centers, group homes. And I've been talking to the inmates, talking to students, talking to kids and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And trying to steer them out of the direction of going out in the street to hustle. Right. Because mm. everybody wants to be the man on the block. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to be that, 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 you know, that Tony Montana. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. But there's a lot of people that tried to go down that road. They ended up in Rikers. Mm -hmm. They ended up in the tombs. Or either they ended up in the graveyard. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. And God puts you here on this purpose to be successful and to have you know, fun with your life and have a, a successful family life. Right. That's what he put us here for, you know? So I'm trying to, I, I try to get people to understand that and I, I want them to take that path that God put that put out for them. Well, thank you, you know, for that. Like man. he put it out for me. So, yeah, clean and sober today, no drugs. Let's go, baby. No alcohol, no cigarettes. Nothing. None of that. I'm right now. I'm not saying that I'm gonna be squeaky clean for the rest of my life, <laughs> but for right now, today, that's the way I'm living, and I feel damn good inside. And not only that, but another thing that makes me want to stay like this, yeah, because I I get commended by a lot of people, man. Flav, yo, man, you look. Good. Yeah, yeah, bro. You, really you know, they say I got the good. glow. Yeah, you know, I got that, that look glow. Clean. Yeah, 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 Yo, yeah. So you wanna so you wanna keep that up. You know, that's that's another thing that makes me wanna keep it up, and it's very encouraging to me. Yeah. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And that's the way that I wanna encourage all others as well. So, you know, I'm glad that I'm glad that we did have this conversation, you know what I'm saying? Because drugs is a serious situation out there in the streets. It is, man. There's I know a lot of people that want help and they're crying out for help but don't really know how to get how to help. Get it. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? I used to be one of them. Yeah. So I know what it feels like to be in someone else's shoes in that predicament, you know right. what I mean? So and thank you but for sure. I like the too. shoes that I'm in. <laughs> Word of, you know what I'm saying? Hey. Alexander McQueen, shot. baby. There you go, flavors. <laughs> yeah, That's, man. Flavors fly, by hey, the way, hey, Kenny. Hey, hey, when I when I when I was fucked up back in the days, uh -huh. man, these shoes right here, uh -huh. I couldn't keep these. I would have went and sold them. I was gonna say. <laughs> 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 I would have went and sold them and put them in the stem and smoked it. And nah, some shit nah, we need, you, we some need you nice shit. and good, Flav. We need you, know, you fly, man. That's what Come drug on, addicts man. do, though, man. I know, you know, I know what I'm saying? Know, Word I up, man. I feel proud not to be one today, though. Yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but I did learn a lot from it. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I could teach you what it's about. I was going to say, we um, had, we a few months ago, we actually had Tracy Morgan uh, mm -hmm. on. And he, he, we talked to him a lot about like the legacy he wants to leave. And I think as you were talking about like how you interact with people at shelters or just people in day-to-day -day life, and they're like, man, you inspire me. I think oh, that's man. a really beautiful way to have a particular legacy. Um, so I'm definitely commending you for that, just Thank for you. yourself, for your own health, but also for- Thank you, Kenny. For the message and you know, you I'm glad that you said that because let me tell you something. You know, every moment that we live, God controls the moment. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. The only thing that God lets us control is our personal actions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how he judges us. Or can no other man judge us. Mm -hmm. And the only one that can judge you besides God is yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so I'm trying to, I'm, 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 this life that we have, we only get it physically once. I don't know nobody else that got a second life. Right. After, after death. After death. You know, you even got some people that was in a car accident. They had cardiac arrest and have, you know, for like about maybe four or five minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Boom, they bring the heart back. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, and the they see the mind. light. The then that person says, you know, I was dead for five minutes. Motherfucker, no, you wasn't. You were not 
dead. You know why? Because your heart responded. So that means you had some type of life in your body. Right. If you didn't have any type of life in your body, your heart would not have responded to it. So there's people that's been in a that's been down for even, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes on cardiac arrest. But then on that 11th minute, their heart came back. But that's because that's the body have life in it. You know what I'm saying? But this life that we live physically once, yo, my thing is this. Have all the fun in life you can, while you can. Get all out of get all out of life you can while you can. Because when we die, we first of all, we can't take none of this shit with us. Nope. Number one. I never seen a U-Haul follow a hearse to the graveyard. Nope. All right. Uh, I never seen a Brinks armored truck follow a U-Haul to the I mean a, a hearse to the graveyard, number one. Know what I'm saying? But when we die, we become nothing but memories. Mm. But we want to be the most positive memories, the most influential memories, you know, that people could talk about years after our death. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's why that's why I really value this life right now that God has given us. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Thank you for that, Thank man. You. Because oh, you're that's what I mean. It's so poetic. Just I think naturally. I think <laughs> when my mom finally got clean and stuff like that, I feel like she felt like she had a new life. Yeah, like you feel like you have a new life, like that. Yeah, you get your once you get your life back, it's like having a brand new life. Yeah, man, you know, mainly when you and, and it feels real good when you can take control of yourself. So mm -hmm. that's right. Absolutely. All right, so talk to us about the single, man. So we right. I've been looking online for a little while, right? Everywhere, man. And something that's crazy, a, a lot of artists had this sort of feeling about AI. Apparently, you have 30 different languages, right? Yeah. Of, or 30 different versions yeah. in different languages of the song. Explain hey, that yo, to us a little bit. Hey, yo, check this out. Let's go. Check this out. Now, I was uh, watching the news one night, right? Uh -huh. And this was last week, one night last week. And they were saying that so people were using AI to lure these kids into something and the kids would get kidnapped and all of that. No, AI has been misused Absolutely. ever since it's been created. You Absolutely. feel me? Yeah. I feel by me doing this song in 30 different languages proves that AI can be used the proper way. And mm. I think that I'm the first one to show the example of the proper way that AI should really be used. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm. It sounds funny hearing my voice in Korea. In Korean. <laughs> it sounds funny hearing my voice speak Italian. I don't speak none of these languages, you know what I'm saying, in the whole mm -hmm. nine. I mean, you know, with this AI thing, come on, man, you could take Dean Martin's voice and do Rebel Without a Pause with it. <laughs> like crazy. That's crazy. It's amazing what technology could do today. You know what I'm saying? So, so I think I'm the first one to show the example of AI being used correctly in the way that it should be used. I love that, man. Yeah. I think it's dope. You know, especially got a guy like Flav, right? Music icon. We got all these other artists talking about, but if you can explain to them in different ways they can use it, make money and figure out how to build their yeah. brand bigger, it's dope. You know, Kenny's an artist too. She performs, so you better be asking these questions, Kenny. You gotta get this info out. <laughs> Yeah, Yo, are we man. gonna see a public enemy too or what? Flavor Flav, come on, Flav. Well, uh, By the way, listen, the only reason why I'm saying <laughs> that I've seen you guys perform live, big <laughs> stages, small stages, the world needs that, Flav. Come on, man. Well, let me say this. You know, um, you know, me and my partner Chuck, man, a lot of people ask me, when is public enemy gonna get back together? When yeah. are we gonna reunite? Well, my answer to that is. We never broke up to reunite. Ah, so, we yeah. just took a long break. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's been all of this, all of this stuff about me and Chuck been beefing and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we haven't been beefing. It's just that there were some things that we wasn't seeing eye to eye on. And in everybody's family or in everybody's group or whatever, everybody's not going to see eye to eye all the time. Forever, right? For right. Long -term but marriage. what right. you do is you try to. Bring it back together, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 still make it work. 
And that's one thing that me and Chuck do, you know. No matter how far apart we grow, we always come back together and we make it work. Love you that, know, man. and that's my brother for real. I'm his brother for real. You know, we have genuine love with each, for each other. You know, so that, that's the relationship that we've always had ever since we worked together for his pops, mm -hmm. driving a U-Haul truck, delivering furniture for interior designers and decorators. And while we're driving that truck, we are in there writing Yo Bum Rush the Show. <laughs> we wrote that on a U-Haul truck, you know what I'm saying? So me and Chuck always, you know, had that brotherly relationship, you know, and, and it's going to always be there until we take our last breath, man. So far as a public enemy tour, Chuck, and I'm <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna throw Chuck under the bus like that. I ain't gonna throw Come Chuck on, under Chuck, the bus we gotta like that. Yeah, because baby. I was gonna say everybody's waiting for you, Chuck. But you know what? They're not waiting for you. They're waiting for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? So Chuck is busy right now too, doing so much stuff. You know what I'm saying? He's been out there doing his own thing. Me, I've been out there doing my own thing. You know what I'm saying? But my, put it this way, this is on my bucket list. Mm. I want to headline Coachella this year. Ooh. Public Enemy. You know what I'm saying? Fire. And Come on, let's go, Kenny. The only way I can do it is with Chuck. We can make some phone calls, baby. We can make some phone calls. Let's so go. So me and Chuck, we've been working together, though. We did the iHeart um, Music Festival. Mu okay. Music Festival. Yep. We did we did two performances for Grammys mm -hmm. and everything. You know what I'm saying? So now that we've kind of touched on, uh, I would like to say the many lives of within one life of Flavor Flav, I was curious, since we talked about your music side quest, as I like to call them, there's also you as an actor, a reality star. I have a particular request if you haven't uh, been in the talks already for perhaps a cooking show. That would be cool. You know, there's been a lot of people <laughs> approaching me about doing a cooking show, and they say I should do a cooking show. You know what I'm saying? And one of the first people that came and approached me was Guy Fury, and I love Guy. He's like, yo, Flay, you need to come over my house, man. Let's talk about a cooking show. You know what I'm Guy saying? Guy Fieri And I don't and think it would be a flames. bad idea. You know what I'm saying? It's just that I got to have time to put into it. That's you know fair. what I'm saying? But sure, I would do, definitely do a cooking show with Guy Fury or do my own cooking show. Food network. Because I could cook. I'm, I'm, I'm a chef. I got, we, my, I got my chef degree in 1978. Mm. Culinary school, yep. Yep, my culinary Other degree. Other side quest. Yep, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, and I took mine up in institutional cooking. What institutional cooking is, baking like pans of rice, pilaf, fettuccine alfredo, crepe that's for like 400 people at one time. Yo. Oh, oh, and then using that... Perhaps some of that knowledge when you when you help out and and put forward too. Yeah, Man, that's beautiful. Wow. Well, but, I might do I might do that, Kenny. Maybe later on down the line. All right. <laughs> Very. <laughs> we don't need on. to go to restaurants no more, Kenny. Yeah, we we just need to hang out with Flay. Because we did order food before, and he was like, "Ah, I can make something better than that. I could <laughs> better than that." The Colonel ain't got nothing, ain't on, me, ain't got huh? nothing on me. <laughs> Flav said the colonel ain't got nothing on me. Nah, the colonel ain't got nothing on me, man. <laughs> Word up, man. People lung tasted my chicken and went and smacked the shit out the colonel. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Hey, hey, and whoever made church's chicken got smacked too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Popeyes too. <laughs> Popeyes too. They, yo, they punch. Yo, pop. Why you think Popeye one eye is swollen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they tasted Flav's chicken and they was like, Yo, Popeye, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but listen, but I eat all of those brands of chicken. Though. I like yeah, Popeye's yeah, yeah, yeah. chicken. I, I like Church's chicken. I grew I grew up off of Church's chicken, but I grew up off of Kentucky Fried Chicken, too. Bang. Mm -hmm. You got to try this place called Sticky's off the chain. They got, like, these chicken fingers on 33rd banging, and we got this other I just, restaurant. I, we just chicken. passed the Sticky's. Yo, the chicken is phenomenal at Sticky's. When I tell you five, okay. and there's a spot... You're a sports fan, so... Hey, yo, I took up? a picture of the sign, and I sent it to Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, Sticky, you got a spot out here, son. <laughs> it's a spot uptown, too, called Flor de Mayo. Fat Joe goes there all the time. Wow. I took D-Wade there, says the best chicken he ever had in his life. 
Floor de Mayo. So we got we're gonna stop by there too one day. Okay, we're gonna no go to the chicken room. We're gonna go to the little chicken room. No doubt. Room. So I remember Fat Joe had to had the clothes store big time. Yeah, FJ five sixty up, up in the Bronx. Up, up in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I first met Big. Pun. Wow, pun is my brother, man. Sam. Yeah, he projects, really, he came up on me. He was like, yo, Flav, yo, what's up, man? Yo, you don't even know who I am. I was like, okay, I know, I don't. <laughs> I don't. He said, yo, man, just don't, for, just don't forget me, okay? I'm Big Punisher. Remember that, Big Punisher, Flav. He was nasty, right, Flav, on and, that mic, boy. And after, that boy after, was cold. And after that night, man, Pun blew up out of nowhere, Boy. man. Yeah. Word up, man. I Yo, don't want to be a player no more. I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like butter baby. pecan. And then it, what? Man, come on. I miss my boy Pun. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember when he passed away, God bless him, and they were doing this moral this mural, mural, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this mural oh, yeah, yeah, up yeah, there yeah. in the Bronx. On, on yeah, yeah, if y'all look on the album cover, if y'all yeah. look on the album cover and y'all see some red writing down there on the sidewalk, that came from Flav. Because oh, wow. I went up there and I spray painted my name on the ground, man. You know what I'm oh, saying? That's Blessings of Big Pun. You got to see a picture of Pun. We grew up in the same project, Southview Projects in the Bronx. And they got a picture of him. We're going to put it up. But I mean, tall, lean, handsome, strong man. You know what I mean? Always got the long leather trench on. But it's so crazy. We grew up together, but I never knew he was that nasty as a rapper. Like, he just came out of nowhere one day and just started going crazy. And he had a big personality, right? He had a crazy big personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah he sure did. He yeah. sure did, man. Big pun, man. But he was mad cool. Yeah, super cool. He was mad cool, man. And he was gracious, man. You know what I'm All saying? All right, so, pun, man. We miss Yo, him. man, mad bless ups. Go out to you, pun. Mm -hmm. Bird up. We are excited to announce that C4Smart Smart Energy is the official energy drink sponsor of the Connect the Dots podcast. It's harder than ever these days to stay focused with endless distractions and shorter attention spans. It can feel impossible to stop scrolling and actually get work done. Thankfully, C4 Smart Energy has reinvented the energy drink game with C4 Smart Energy, the only energy drink clinically proven to provide enhanced mental focus. C4 Smart Energy is formulated with 200 milligrams of natural caffeine from green coffee beans, plus potassium, niacin, vitamin B12, to help support well being and help you feel your best, all while boosting metabolism and promoting fat burn. From your brain to your body, C4 Smart Energy is the energy drink that does it all and tastes amazing. C4 Smart Energy is available at Target, Amazon, and anywhere else you get energy drinks. Go grab a can and share on social media tagging C4 Energy and the Connect the Dots podcast to show us how Smart Energy helps you stay focused wherever you are. C4 Smart Energy, stay focused. Yeah, I was just going to lead into Flavor of Love because... <laughs> because... Let's Grew up go. on it. Let's go. Uh, okay. But first, we're going to have our C4 Smart Energy moment. Uh, we love to bring everyone here and ask them, like, what are your ways that you, sh like, ritualistically stay focused? Do you have a particular workout routine? Do you pray? Do you um, speak to family? Everyone has something different. To tell you the truth, Kenny, the only method that I got to stay focused is just get up and go mm. and pay attention to the world. Routine. That's my. That's how I stay focused. Mm. I don't do anything to stay focused, like energy bars and stuff, or you know, pills or anything like that. I'm. I'm just natural. Mm. So that's how I stay focused. Is it because you feel like you have such an explicit purpose at this point? Like you know what you're here for. You know what you well, want to do. Or? Well, let me say this, because my explicit purpose, you know what I'm saying, really is to be here and serve the world and make the world happy. Mm. You know, that's what God put me on this earth to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's my sole explicit purpose. Okay. To stay Beautiful. focused. And I want to stay focused because now I know you're getting ready to ask me some stuff and I better be focused <laughs> with, with my answers. So. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> she's loading up the gun, yo. No, she's loading, just, the gun, she's just, loading up the gun. She's ready just, to shoot. It's just, okay, so. I've been kind of chomping at the bit. I don't know if anyone has noticed off on one of the cameras because I um, personally, I grew up a little after your more active moments in music. So I know you particularly as who I grew up with. 
on Flavor of Love. Wow. <laughs> and so, um, honestly, I, I uh, used to watch it every week with my family. Wow. Uh, we watched every season. Wow. We watched our spinoff seasons when uh, Tiffany Pollard, New York, got uh, her shows and, and when... They did Rock of Love. Like, you were really the spearhead for that particular genre wow. of uh, reality television. Um, do you have any particular moments that come to mind when someone brings up Flavor of Love? The only particular moments that I have is just all that I've done. Mm. You know, all that I did. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was told that I did set the bar for all of these other reality TV shows. You know what I'm saying? So there was so many fun moments to- I still watch it to this the, day. <laughs> during, my, during my three seasons, mm -hmm. there was so many fun moments to where it's hard to focus on one moment. Do you keep in contact with anyone? Huh? From it? Do you keep in contact with anyone from it? No, anymore? I don't hear from any of them, you okay. know? I mean, you know, they live in their life mm -hmm. and I'm still out here living mine, but I'm proud of, some of the girls that came through my show, because there's a couple out there that's still doing their thing, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like like New York, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, she came on my show. She made great TV. Very good TV. You know what I'm saying, word? And not only that, but my show, Flavor of Love, I don't think it would have really been what it was without New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the whole nine. So I really thank her, and I'm proud of her, because she's still out there doing television. Mm -hmm. Right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, hoops. She's still out there doing her thing. Saw a movie with her not too long ago. She was like, yeah. doing a Tubi movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's done movies and everything. So, and then also Delicious. She's still out there doing her thing mm -hmm. and everything. So, I'm glad that I can help these girls. I, I, I'm glad that I can help set up a platform for these girls to go on and further their lives. and I don't know about the other girls, though, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not hearing anything about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But those are the three that I mainly hear about. And then also my girl, Crazy. Oh, uh, man, Crazy. She's married now, and she oh. has a family. So I'm proud of her, you know what I'm saying? And there's some other girls out, even my girl Miami, she's out there and she's still doing her thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know about all of the other girls. Yeah. I don't really know, you know? Absolutely. So I don't really keep in contact with none of them, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because um, to this day, Flavor of Love is, you were talking about it being kind of like the spearhead for a lot of that TV. To this day, I have not seen a reality dating show that quite that quite encapsulates the particularly the first two seasons of Flavor of Love. So it's well, I'm gonna tell you the truth. If it ain't Flav, you won't see it either. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? But, that's why, uh, but, we, that's but, why but, we need the cooking just, show. <laughs> I, but I wanna say my second season, <sighs> my second season, Flavor of Love 2, is the it was my biggest season. Mm -hmm. And I brought to VH1 over seven million five hundred viewers. Wow! My God! You know, seven <laughs> wait seven million five hundred thousand viewers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? VH1 has never ever seen those numbers yet to this day as we sit here and speak. So I, you know, I said so you had the biggest number ever for ever. any show on VH1. Ever, it. yeah. You know what to I'm this saying? Day. So, Let's go, baby. But I couldn't have did it without y'all, though. Right. Because if it wasn't for y'all watching, Watch then that show wouldn't have been shit. <laughs> and it's, so thank y'all for watching me. And to There's this a lot of day. people that used to get in trouble for watching me. <laughs> thank y'all for getting in trouble watching me. <laughs> Like to this day, like regularly iconic uh, lines from you in New York and from um, the one that says she looks like Beyonce. Uh, those are still regular to this day, known memes and like conversations that people can always say, "Yep, flavor of love." I remember that. So it's it's that iconic, and I and I I this is very surreal for me. I'm not gonna lie, because <laughs> 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 I, I actually before I got here, I was like. Guess who I'm gonna meet to my aunt? She was like, I don't know. I'm like, Flav, Flav. She was like, 
And, huh. that's, and that's crazy that you said that this is very surreal for you <laughs> because my first reality TV show that I've ever done was called Surreal Life. Surreal Life, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> With uh, Bridget, and that, Bridget Nielsen. That, yep, Bridget Nielsen, Jordan. Uh, oh, why am I getting his last name? Jordan, he was the new, the, the leader of... Uh, the lead singer for New Kids on the Block, Jordan. Huh? Jordan Knight. Jordan Knight. As Dino. Thank you, Rhiannon. Yeah, Jordan Knight. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? We had this girl on our show named Ryan Starr who was on American Idol but got booted off. <laughs> I ain't, yo, me and her, I didn't like her either. Man. She, was the, <laughs> she was the only one that I bumped heads with. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. Um, my boy Dave Coulier from Full House. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everybody loves Full House. Full House, that's right. Dave Coulier, that was my boy. That's still my boy to this day. You know what I'm saying? And then also, um, and then Bridget. Mm-hmm. Bridget Nielsen. So that cast right there. That cast right there, uh, well, I say was the number one cast because that season, mm-hmm. we were number one. Mm. Oh, wow. One VH1 that mm-hmm. season. But all, everything that I've done on VH1 was number one. So when I left VH1, I left VH1 at number one. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why right now to this day, you know, I still get the reactions from people on the street. Mm-hmm. And I mean, come on, it's been so many years now since the last time I did a flavor of love. Mm-hmm. But the way people treat me today is if I shot that shit last week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I distinctly and, and remember I'm, I, watching. I'm grateful for all of the love, you know, and, and people paying homage to me and all of these flowers that I'm getting from people, man. Mm-hmm. I mean... God is good. God is good. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? And I don't take none of this for granted, man. G-I-G. Good, G-I-G. Man. God is good. God I'm going to watch season one again when I get home, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> it's on Hulu. I saw it the other day. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> watch it again. Everybody asked me about the episode when um, on, on on season one, when New York spit at Pumpkin. Yes. Oh, yeah, When yeah. Pumpkin spit at New Pumpkin. York. New York, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That was one of the most funniest moments in reality TV history, and I ain't going to lie, but when Punkin spit that loogie at New York, uh-huh. if y'all looked, that loogie just missed her mouth that was open. <laughs> yeah. But New York came came and pushed her into the camera. They started fighting. I ain't going to lie, but if they was fighting, I was standing there dying. Yeah. I was laughing like, well, it it's- made great. Great TV, but they didn't show it. Though. It struck lightning, like to yeah. this day. Yeah. I, still, I still see how. Yeah. I want to know, like, when you were picking names in particular, pretty iconically, uh, was it literally just off of the aura of the person that walked? Right, up? that's what it was. Okay. It was based off the aura, aura of the person. So I had to sit and I had to talk with you. I had to date you mm-hmm. first before I could give you a name. Now I'm curious, what would my nickname be? I would have to date you first in order for me to know that. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. So hanging with Peck, CC, Tiafo, and all of these sports legends has really made me get into Prize Picks, the official daily fantasy sponsor of Connect the Dots. Prize Picks is so simple, and to be honest, really means more than traditional sports for me. It's it's the esports I absolutely love. As y'all know, I'm a bit of a gamer. So the fact that I can make selections on Call of Duty is pretty awesome. It makes watching the matches so much better. And I'm really starting to get into the teams. I'm excited for us to have some WNBA legends, Caitlin, Sabrina, hopefully you're listening so I can make my selection on those games and Peck can take me courtside perhaps. As a Michigan girl, I even got my friends into making selections on NBA games with the Pistons, yeah. <laughs> Prize picks for me is about simplicity between the ability to use Apple Pay and easily deposit or the promotions like Taco Tuesday. I have been having so much fun bouncing my selections off Peck. Hit the description for the official link to use code CTD for a first deposit match up to $100. So usually we do this with hip hop artists 
but we're gonna do it like more traditionally we're actually. Gonna we're gonna oh, we're gonna do both? Yeah. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do is a current, well not current everybody, cause they're all current. Current basketball players. So we're doing it a more traditional tournament style at this point, cause we're doing sports. So it's like NCAA tournament style where, yeah. where they each eliminate each other to go into the next round and then you'll figure out as Who's they the eliminate each other, who, in your opinion, is the most current basketball player that you like. It doesn't have to be on anything. If you feel comfortable doing it or you don't, whatever you Let want. me try it. Try Let's it. see. Sure. Right. LeBron versus John. Levon, LeBron no. versus who? John Moran. Whoa. Why y'all doing this to me? <laughs> Wow, because let me tell you, man, I mean, LeBron, Le, 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 LeBron is like my, my most favorite basketball player of the decade. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my most favorite basketball player of all time is Michael Jordan, mm. just to let y'all know. And then, and then besides Michael Jordan, Dr. J, Julius Irvin. Mm. I just had to get that out, you mm. know what I'm saying? But, and I love LeBron, man, but I love Ja Morant. Ja Morant ain't no joke. Ja Morant is the truth. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a hard pick between LeBron and Ja Morant. Well, I know somebody got to be the GOAT, though, right? Right. It's got to be one. Mm -hmm. All right, I got to go with LeBron because he's got more seniority in the game. All right. All right, so so in this bracket of uh, flavor, Joel Embiid, jo Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid versus Joel Luka Doncic. Embiid and Luca Doncic. All right, check this out. I watched Luca the other night. He did this half court shot. That shit was so amazing, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Joel Embiid, I like Joel Embiid, man. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. He muscles his way in to shit. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. Um, I'm going to go with Luca on this one. Ooh. Okay. okay. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and the reason why is because of what Luca just recently did. Yeah. He's like, he actually said he has 1.4 million votes, I think, right now. He's like the lead vote getter in the All Star game this year. Who, Luca? Luca, yeah. Kid is nasty. So I, so I think, so, so, so I think I, I think I pulled that one off yeah, right there. Yeah, you pulled then. that one off. Cause I love Joel Embiid. I got nothing against Joel Embiid. No, 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 no. no. Just, yeah. Giannis versus Kevin Durant, KD. <laughs> y'all are these rock and hard place people. That's what y'all are. That's what Upper the fuck y'all are, Upper man. <laughs> rock and hard place people. Okay, and y'all got me in the middle of the rock and hard place. Um, That's a good one. Giannis or Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant, easy money sniper versus Well, see, Giannis. let me say this, because Giannis... He's a powerhouse, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And he muscles his way into the, to jam the ball. Kevin Durant, yo, Kevin Durant will just stay outside and take your ass all day long. But sniper. he can jam too. Sniper. I got to go with Kevin Durant. Going with the sniper. Got to go with Kevin Durant. Going with the sniper, Kevin Kenny. Durant. Yep. And then we have Steph Curry versus Anthony Edwards. Versus who? Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Edwards versus Steph Curry. Steph Curry, man. Oh, that was quick. That, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did that kind of fast. I did that one kind of fast. Yeah, yeah come on, man. Hey, hey, hey. Ain't nothing beating up, not too much beating out my boy Steph Curry when it comes down to these threes. So we have. You know what I'm saying? There's only one other person that can really, really bang them fucking threes out in the NBA. Who's that? Trey Young, man. Ooh, okay. Come on now. Y'all know what time it is. I thought you were going to say Clay Thompson, man. Yo, Clay's, yo, Clay be banging out them threes too. I'm telling you, G. But the way that Trey Young be doing this shit, like, oh. hey, Clay Thompson got, he, he got his work cut out for him. Okay. I mean, when it comes down to competition of shooting the threes. Shooting the threes, all right. So that means we have LeBron versus Luca. Yep. Round two is so LeBron between. versus Luca. What else you got on that side, Kenny? And then we have uh, Kevin Durant versus Steph Curry. I, 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 well, we did the LeBron versus Luca. I went with LeBron. LeBron? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because come on, because LeBron, man, he's 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 a senior. 
Okay. okay. He was there before Luca. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So that means we have Kevin Durant versus Steph Curry. Kevin Durant versus Steph Curry? Mm -hmm. Damn, to me, it's damn near a tie. You know what I'm saying? To me, but. If you had to choose, Kevin Durant, St Steph, Steph Curry. Curry. Steph right. Curry, Ooh. because the reason okay. why I say that, because I think Steph Curry made more threes than Durant. Okay. All right. Okay. You know all what right. I'm saying? And Durant can take your, I'm telling you, Durant <laughs> will be outside taking you all day long. Nice. Nice. So, so will Steph. Okay. So we have LeBron versus Steph Curry. Drum roll. Le Le LeBron versus Steph Curry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. for the, this is for the GOAT. Current bass. Current NBA players. Steph Curry. Ooh. Okay. okay. So we're going to do a quick hip hop modern rapper bracket. We have Drake versus Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. Drake. Drake. Kendrick Lamar versus Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. All so right. that's. Okay, then Nicki Minaj versus Lil Baby. Nicki Minaj. Jack Harlow versus J. Cole. J. Cole. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make a face. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. Drake versus Kendrick Lamar? Mm hmm Kendrick Lamar. All right. Nicki Minaj versus J. Cole. J. Cole. So that's Kendrick Lamar versus J. Cole. Kendrick Lamar. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Flav. I All like right. it. That's because I know my sugar, honey, iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is, right? Sugar honey, I see. Shit. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> there you go. Not too many people get that. You, you're dope. You're dope, Kenny. You are dope, sister. I love you, man. I love you. you. That's it. I Kenny's love you more than I love Kenny's, Lucy. Kenny's like, this is rough. 2024 is over for me. I'm telling you. Word up. I love her more than I, I love her more than I love Lucy, man. <laughs> and with that, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much Yo, for coming out. All right, guys. Thank you all for having right, me. You, no doubt.